Democrats appear to be in a lot of trouble. According to the latest poll from the New York Times and Siena, they're looking into how voters feel about both parties as we quickly approach the midterm elections. And something that should be incredibly unsurprising to everyone, but especially the Democratic Party, is that the majority of voters are mainly concerned with the economy more than any other issue including the fact that women just had their reproductive rights stripped away from them. Now, according to this New York Times Siena poll, 49% of likely voters said that they plan to vote for a Republican to represent them in Congress on November 8th. Compared with 45% who plan to vote for a Democrat. Now, this is not good news because the result represents an improvement for Republicans since September when Democrats held a one point edge among likely voters in the last Times Siena poll. So the voters are asked, what is your number one concern? What is the top priority? And of course, the economy was number one. Other issues didn't even come close. Um, in fact, when it comes to Republicans, uh, they cited the economy by a two to one margin. Um, and so as the Times also writes, with inflation unrelenting and the stock market steadily on the decline, the share of likely voters who said economic concerns were the most important issues facing America has leaped since July to 44% from 36%, which is far higher than any issue as I mentioned earlier. And there's even more bad news. So that poll showed that Republicans actually opened up a 10% point lead among crucial independent voters compared with a three point edge for Democrats in September as undecided voters move toward Republicans. So what we're really having a conversation about isn't individuals who typically identify as hardcore Democrats or hardcore Republicans. We're mostly focusing on those independent voters. And when it comes to independent voters, not looking good for Democrats. And also the largest swing noticed in this poll was among independent female voters. This is what was really interesting to me, especially when you consider the reversal of Roe v. Wade. In September, they favored Democrats by 14 points. Now, independent women backed Republicans by 18 points. And one of those women is a 37 year old who spoke to the Times. Her name is Robin Ackerman, registered Democrat. But this time around, she plans to vote for Republicans in the midterm election. She says, I'm shifting more toward Republican because I feel like they're more geared toward business, said Robin Ackerman, a 37 year old Democrat and mortgage loan officer who lives in Newcastle, Delaware. Ackerman said she disagreed 1000% with the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade and erase the national right to an abortion. But that doesn't really have a lot to do with my decision, she said of her fall vote. I'm more worried about other things. And Jenk, this is what I feel like I repeat on the show often. While the culture war is important to engage in for human rights reasons, for civil rights reasons, for all of that. What really gets the voters out to the polls is the economy. What's going on with their pocketbooks? What's going on with their bank accounts? What's going on with gas prices, inflation? And I don't think the Democrats have done a good enough job disproving that Republicans would be better for the economy. Yeah, it's almost all over now. Um, so uh, I was interviewed by Fox News uh, five days ago, it hasn't come out yet. And when they asked me, who do you think is gonna win the house? I said, I don't know, you need more data. Well, more data has come in. So now the elections are only about two weeks out. Democrats used to have a one point lead, now they have a four point deficit. So a five point swing at the national level is devastating. Because and there's only one thing that could rescue them. I'm gonna get to that in a second. Because we're not talking about a local race or even a state race where you could have more wild swings. On a national level, those swings get ironed out because there's a lot more people. And so the numbers become a little bit more reliable. So the districts are deeply gerrymandered, but still a five point swing near the end of the election will make a giant difference in anything that's close to a swing district. So the Democrats are almost definitely going to lose the House now. So 
Is it an outlier poll? I suppose so. I, I say almost because you would probably you would need a couple more polls to confirm this, and you need to get a little bit closer to the election. But we're pretty damn close. So what could rescue them? Well, what could rescue them is an all-out assault in the last two weeks uh, on the Republicans on the issue of the economy. Uh, will the Democrats do that? No, there's no chance they'll do that. So that's why we're pretty much doomed. So uh, they barely mentioned the economy at all. Why? Because of two reasons. One. They're not very bright, okay, so I'll get to that more in depth in a minute. But I say they're not bright in this context because, um, well, if 44% of the voters say that the economy is the number one issue and, and that issue wins by a landslide, abortion coming in at 7%, you would think that you would want to talk about the economy in your ads, and they're running almost no ads on the economy. Why? Because they drank the Republican Kool-Aid. They think the Republicans have a huge advantage on the economy. Why would the Republicans have an advantage on the economy? Now, I get it. Biden's in charge, Democrats are in charge in way of high inflation, right? But you don't have to just stop the analysis there. Well, what would help the average American with high inflation? Well, if they had higher wages, that would help, right? Because then you could pay for all that stuff that costs more now. Well, good news, theoretically, in the Democratic agenda, you got $15 minimum wage, which would raise the wages of not just people making minimum wage, who are all working Americans, but it would also create pressure to raise everybody else's rates and wages. So now, what would that create? That would create all of television and Fox News and the Republicans yelling at you, higher wages is terrible, we need lower wages. Boom, you got them, and you win. It's that simple, but they won't do it because they're not that bright. And, but more importantly, this second, a reason because their donors own them. So if they talked about higher wages, their donors, the Democratic donors, would bite their heads off. Anna, as you say all the time, the Republicans have done nothing for the economy and they propose nothing for the economy. You could yep. slaughter them on that issue if you actually bothered to fight, but the Republic um, the Democrats never ever do. I mean, the reason why Republicans are getting even more like grotesque and outrageous in their manufactured culture wars. Like now the, the fear mongering about uh, furries using litter boxes in school bathrooms is because they will, they will talk about anything other than the fact that they have absolutely no plan to make the economy better for ordinary working Americans. They don't want to address the fact that the ideas they have, including, by the way, the story I covered last Wednesday, their current plan to privatize Social Security and cut funding to, to Medicare, they don't want to talk about that out in the open. So they lean into the fear mongering and the culture wars. And when Democrats allow them to frame the debate, frame the argument, think about how it plays out over and over again. The only thing Democrats can do in trying to engage in the culture war debate is scold them. Right, scold them as racists and bigots. And if you're an ordinary American struggling with inflation, unable to pay for the insanely expensive gas prices at the pump, unable to pay for the inflated costs of food, if you've seen your retirement savings slashed as a result of the stock market suffering right now, you you don't you don't care about Democrats wanting to scold people for being racist and bigots. You wanna know, okay, is anyone gonna do anything for me? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the anger and the frustration is understandable. And I think, Jenk, I'm gonna tweak your argument on one thing, which is no, the number one reason why Democrats allow Republicans to frame the debate on culture war issues. And the reason why they don't force Republicans to talk about the economy is because of the corruption. I think that the fact that corporate interests have completely taken over the majority of politicians, both on the Democratic side and Republican side, is incredibly detrimental to the American electorate. Yeah, no, no, don't get me wrong. That's definitely number one. Being stupid is a distance second to why they're not fighting on this. In fact, here, let's just fill in the rest of the blanks here. Uh, they had paid family leave, that was in their agenda. It pulls at over 80%. It pulls at over 70% for Republican voters. It's a layup, biggest layup in American history. So what do you do with it? You propose it by, it was in Build Back Better, the Republicans killed it. First of all, you should say in all your ads, the Republicans killed paid family leave. Monsters, monsters. They want you to go back to the mines and to the assembly lines and back to Walmart You know where you work the day after you deliver. That's accurate, right? 
and, and paid family is super popular. Child tax credit was intensely popular. The Republicans killed it, the Republicans killed it, the Republicans killed it. Now, of course, the reason why they don't do all that stuff is exactly what we explained. Look, paid family leave, they could do that right now. Why? I mean, this goes back to corrupt and stupid. If you put it, okay, it didn't get through and build back better, just do it as a standalone bill. Well, every Republican would vote no, and then you would get four out of five voters really, really mad that they voted no, and you could use that in all your ads. So why didn't the Democrats propose it as a standalone bill? It's a layup, right? Right? These guys say, claim, oh, they're gonna play four dimensional chess. And the idiot news actors on television say the same thing. No, they don't even know how to play one dimensional checkers. They're like, oh, oh, oh. So why didn't they do paid family leave as a standalone bill? Because their donors told them not to. They said no, that would cost business interest a couple of cents. So you are you are to disarm against the Republicans, shut up and take your losses. And that leads me to my final point, which is, look, the a person running for Congress doesn't want to lose, right? So, and and the news actor doesn't know he's a news actor. He thinks he's a news anchor. So, but at the very top, do the donors that give to both Republicans and Democrats want the Democrats to lose at least one branch of Congress so they go back to doing absolutely nothing? Of course they do, right? So, tons of Democratic donors are not going to be that upset if they lose the House. That's gonna work out really great for them, actually. So we're getting exactly what the donors wanted, as happens every single time, because our system is based on bribery. They're allowed to simply bribe the politicians, and we call them campaign contributions, and we would go round and round playing this kabuki theater, which is total nonsense. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.